I do have some jokes this time. Hopefully they're better than last time. <laughs> and it's good to see you, Teresa. I'm glad you were able to come. So, what is Coffee's favorite karaoke song? Hit me with your best shot. Mm -hmm. Don't be worried about your smartphone or TV spying on you. Your vacuum cleaner has been gathering dirt on you for years. <laughs> what do you call a woman who sets fire to all of her bills? Bernadette. <laughs> Little known fact, before the crowbar was invented, crows simply drank at home. Last one, why aren't koalas real bears? Because they don't uh, meet the qualifications. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Um, this, the message this morning is um, trust walk. So, Miko, trust walk. Yeah, you got it. I'm ringing a little bit, so I think Charlie's going up to turn it down. Uh, but Miko might be able to turn it down right there. So, the definition of a trust walk how many of you are familiar with the popular trust walk? Okay, Marilyn, you've heard of it before. Uh, trust Walk is a popular team-building activity that helps people practice trusting each other. The use of a blindfold is common. The blindfolded one is led or guided by another team made around and over obstacles. Sometimes the blindfolded person is guided by words only. And how many of you know that we are yoked together with Christ? Yeah. But how many of you know that we may not be knowing where he's taking us. Yeah, that's a trust walk. I, I know that I have been in a season, can you hear me okay back there? Everybody can hear me? Okay. I've been in a season of pruning. I've been in a season of transition. How many of you have been in a season of pruning, of the Lord bringing stuff up? How many of you have been in a season of transition I think we're all waving our hands, yeah? Okay. Uh, please don't stop listening. I'm going to keep beating this drum. Fasting. I'm going to keep beating the drum. Uh, for me, has brought up a desire for greater consecration, greater purity. At first, it was a work of obedience, but as I've continued to press into fasting, and I'm not fasting every single day. I'm not fasting every single week. I'm trying to once a week. Um, I'm lucky if I can make it the whole day, and that's because of the loving service of my husband when he brings me treats, and, and he tells me I'm making steak tonight. <laughs> I'm like, oh, thank you, honey. <laughs> but God has grace for that because me... Pressing into fasting isn't about uh, performance. I'm not going to check that one. Um, me pressing into fasting is pressing into relationship with him. But one of the things that fasting has done is it exposed areas of weakness, of vulnerabilities, of unbelief, and of lack of trust in the Lord. Um, I'm just going to define what fasting is or can be. For me, fasting looks like getting up in the morning, taking a bottle of um, fasting salts, and I'll have that three times during the day. I might have a cup of um, turmeric tea because I usually take capsules of turmeric for some of my joint pain, and I'm not going to be taking those capsules without food. I'm just being practical. That, that's what it looks like for me. Other people could be fasting from something that they normally would really love to do when they come home from work, and they'd love to get on the TV, or they'd love to binge that special show. Some people might be wanting to uh, stop 
um, the special coffee drinks during the day. Father, I'm doing this for you. Somebody might want to fast for one meal. Father, I'm going to go away. I'm just going to spend that time with you. I'm giving you my whole heart at this time. So it's going to look different for every person, but it's the intention of your heart. Father, I want you. I want more of you. I want you to work in my life. I want you to expose those areas that are standing in the way of me looking like you, that are standing in the way of me really knowing your heart of love for me. And he's so faithful to do that. And I've been amazed at the areas in my own life of acceleration and also of passion being renewed and stirred up. So now we're going to go a different direction. So let's turn to Jonah. If you have your Bibles, sometimes it's nice to actually see the words. So on Wednesday night, I actually have a message already written out in another journal. And then on Wednesday night, I went to, we have soaking prayer at 6 o'clock intercessory prayer at 7 o'clock here every Wednesday. And so I was here at 6 o'clock, and we started doing soaking prayer, and the Lord took me to Jonah. He started reminding me about that story, and I'm like, why are you telling me about Jonah? I'm just going to read 1 through 3 in the first chapter. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for uh, their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare, and he went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Um, How many of you know the story of Jonah? You familiar with it? Yeah. Anybody not know it? I can read more. Or you can read more later. So uh, Jonah decided he knew better, decided he wasn't going to obey what the Lord said, and so he was going to just run away. Um, It's kind of useless to run away from God because he can see you wherever you're at. And I'm sure it wasn't even a surprise to to, uh, God what Jonah was doing and And if you know the story, you know a whale gobbled him up and Jonah had a repentant heart and the whale bleh him out. And and, uh, then he went to uh, Nineveh and he spoke to Nineveh and they, uh, the word from the Lord, I'm going to destroy you. And they all repented. And then God relented as they repented. And that city was saved because of Jonah's obedience and because of God's heart of grace and mercy. Um, But what the Lord was showing me about Jonah, in fact, uh, well, let me just say, Nineveh, they were enemies of Israel. So, of course, Jonah would have a little bit of a hesitation visiting an enemy country. They had been harassing the Israelites and I'm going to send you right into the middle of that nation, and you're going to go to Nineveh, and you're going to tell them that I said. And, and Jonah would say, well, no, you can't do that. Don't you know what they've been doing to my brethren? They've been harassing us. They've been ruining lives. And, and so that was possibly even a part of his refusal to obey the Lord. So I'm going to read what the Lord told me about Jonah on Wednesday night. He said, Jonah did not want to do what I told him to do. He did not trust that I know what I was doing. He couldn't speak a message of reconciliation to a people that had abused his loved ones. He couldn't abide that I was offering them my attention and my favor. They were not my special people, and they had been abusing my chosen people. And then um, shortly after that, he told me, he said, Lori, like Jonah, 
you are not willing to trust that I know what I'm doing. How many of you like to receive words like that from the Lord? Did I tell you that, Charlie? No. <laughs> yeah. I do want to say I may not be the only one here. So as Charlie was up here and he said, I just want you to be thinking about areas that, you're, that you might be stuck. I also ask you to ask Holy Spirit to speak to areas that you may not realize that you're refusing to lay down and trust him in. So when it comes to laying down our lives, laying down our wants, laying down our desires, submitting ourselves to his hand, submitting ourselves to his direction, do we have any areas that we know we aren't quite willing to give him control over? I'm just going to ask for a show of hands. You don't have to tell me what it is. Anybody have any of those that you know of? I'll, I'll raise both my hands for the rest of you, okay? <laughs> so trust walk. A trust walk is not trusting ourselves. A trust walk is trusting in his character. And Jonah didn't believe or trust God's character. Maybe he didn't fully know God's character. Maybe he hadn't had some of the uh, manifest presence times that we've had where his goodness has showed up in places where we know that we've had shortcomings or when we've fallen apart when we really needed to be fully present. Um, let's talk about some of uh, God's character traits that we know of. Go ahead, throw them out there. God's character traits. Merciful. Merciful. Faithful. Faithful. Loving. Loving. Kind, compassionate, compassionate. Fierce. fierce, faithfulness, faithfulness. omnipresent, omnipresent. Forgiving. forgiving. Come on, Dana, you got one. <laughs> All knowing. Funny. Funny, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I also have righteous, protector, defender, provider, healer, good. Thank you for that word this morning, Jeff. I feel like I'm stepping into a river. Yeah. My question to you about all of those things that were thrown out there about the character traits of God, who he really is, do we actually believe them? for us personally. So we know them up here. We can recite them. Have we been able to make that 12-inch journey to know them in our heart? I will say that the Father is the one designing our journey. He's the one that's going to be growing us the thing I love about fasting is that I'm partnering with him. I would, honestly, I think I would really hate to have to go through what he would need to take me through if I was not partnering with him. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I want to engage with him and what he's doing in, in my heart. So how do we make that journey with him? I'm going to list three things. Fasting, can be fasting, yeah. Reading the word and spending time with him. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And I know many people here that can recite words from the Lord, from his word. They know his word. Charlie this morning 
he sent to my computer accidentally two sheets of life verses that he has memorized. Two, you can, you, yeah, two sheets, right? It, two copies of the same. Oh, two copies of the same sheet. <laughs> I was really impressed. <laughs> I'm still impressed. <laughs> because it's very small print. I wouldn't even be able to read it without my glasses. Okay. The other thing I want to say about trusting the Lord for his direction in our lives. Um, there's the possible refusal to trust. Um, there's the inability to believe because I haven't really experienced it in my heart. But sometimes when he gives us direction, I'm trusting more in my belief that I'm not really able to hear from him than I am trusting in him. So I'm putting more power in the kingdom of darkness than I am in the kingdom of light at that point. So we're not trusting in our ability to hear him, we're trusting in his character. I do want to say that our ability to hear him, to sense his leading in this trust walk, is a result of spending time with him and of reading his word. But guess what? There's no shortcut. So the more that we press in and spend time with him, whether we're fasting or whether we're taking that time, Miko has been very encouraging. He said, we need to be in the word and praying every day. So the more that we press in, the more that we spend that time with him, the more that he exposes areas in our life that's not, they're not quite in alignment with the kingdom of light, he will um, show us lies that we've believed about him that aren't true. He'll show us lies that we've believed about ourselves that aren't true, areas that need to be healed. He'll show us ungodly motives that are hidden in our heart, the things that motivate us that are not of the kingdom of heaven. And he'll show us areas of sin that we've been blind to. Like Jeff was talking about standing in the middle of that river with the water up to our neck and things are coming off the back that we can't see. Those could be sin areas that we haven't even known were there. And as we ask for forgiveness and we lay all of those areas down as they come up, the more clearly we'll be able to hear him, sense him, perceive him, and trust him. We're becoming more and more like him. In Isaiah 26, 12, I'm actually going to jump to 13. O oh Lord, our God, masters besides you have had dominion over us, but by you only we make mention of your name because they are dead, they will not live, they are deceased and they will not rise. So as we lay those areas down, those kings, rulers in our own heart and life, they have no longer any power over us. He's delivering us, he's freeing us. I'm going to go to an incredible book. How many of you have read any part of this book? It is called Fasting for Fire by Jennifer Mizkoff. I'm almost all the way through. I read about two pages at a time. Uh, if anybody wants to borrow it when I'm done, let me know. What? You do? Okay. All right. <laughs> Everybody that wants to jump on that fasting bandwagon. Yeah. <laughs> In the fire fast, we welcome a baptism of fire to destroy every other competitor vying for a place of prominence in our hearts. Yay. <laughs> So in a trust walk, we have uh, an increasing knowing his character, not just knowing about his character. It's like that word knowing, where Adam knew his wife. There's seeing her, and then there's really knowing her. 
right? Increasing our ability to hear and sense and perceive his direction and overcoming our refusal to obey. So Jonah, he had two things going. He, he refused to obey, and I think that much of it was based on his lack of trust in God's character. And I said two things, and I don't know what the second thing is. So guess what? You just got to... One thing. Um, and then there can also be a refusal to trust or believe. Now I have a few things listed. Um, what, what do you think might be an area for you that would cause you to refuse to trust or obey? I know I have some. Intimidation, Intimidation absolutely, yeah. Fear. Uh, complacency is a big one. Yeah. I was just reading about what the, the word actually talks about, complacency. Um, the one that was just coming to my mind was bitterness. bitterness uh -huh. um, issues in our, in our life or in the lives of the ones around us. It takes our focus off of him. Yeah. Distractions, right. Um, yeah, it's, I'm, I will be, I just want to say I understand, and I've been there, when you know that things are going on in the lives of those that you love, sometimes it's really hard to just let go and trust him. And letting go doesn't mean that you don't pray about them, because the word says that we, we, Ask, we seek, we knock. And those words, ask, seek, knock, they are not just for right now, one time. That's continue to ask, continue to seek, continue to knock. Don't give up. But it's not based on your power. It's based on you. I know who you are. I know what you said. I'm going to declare who you are out loud. I'm going to declare what I know about you and what you've said out loud. Um, and that's one of those things I think that even Gustavo and Abby were encouraging us with is to declare what we know to be true, what he said to us, the, the promises he's given us, the words he's declared to us, um, the pictures he's shown us. I have uh, also the need to control and to want your own way. In Proverbs 3, 5, how many of you know what that verse is right out loud? I mean right here in this moment. I think I'm drooping. Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Yeah. And then the, um, I think I spoke about it the last message, but I believe that we're in the season of those ten virgins. You've got the five that are always in his presence, getting their oil constantly filled up in their lamps. And then you've got the others that are getting distracted by life, and they're, they're not focusing on pressing into his presence to receive the oil of life. And so when it comes right down to it, the bridegroom shows up, and they don't have enough oil in their lamp. I'm going to read one more thing, um, a journal entry from this morning. It might have been yesterday. So we're not trusting... Oh, I do have something from the Lord. We're not trusting in our ability to hear him. That is focusing on us. So maybe it's right here. Yeah, this is to us, to the church at large. He said, trusting me now on purpose, yielding your life your spouse's life, your children's lives into my hands, that is a choice. Trusting me that when you step forward, there will be something under your feet. The places I'm calling you into need to have submitted, yielded, and trusting people. 
trusting that I have your best interests at heart, that I am for you, that I am for your loved ones. More, he's for our loved ones more than we are. That I love you and I will always be there with you and I have amazing things in store for you. How many want to join the trust walk? Yeah? Part of, um, I, I shared with a few people, but part of something that came apparent, became apparent to me this morning, I think I've shared with you before about the picture that I saw of God's glory coming as I was sitting on the front steps of the church. I was actually up in the prayer room when the picture came, but I saw myself sitting on the front steps of the church and I saw his glory come from 118th and it rolled over this whole neighborhood all the way to the Willamette River. And I said, I want to have a part of that. That's a trust, you know? And so as we've gone out and we've done prayer walking, and uh, we've been doing it for how long now? Yeah, for months. Um, I don't know if any of you have sensed it, but the end of this street, 116th, has been really icky. Spiritually, it's been very oppressed. It feels so much lighter. But one of the things that I had forgotten was, and I might have shared this actually this morning before we opened up the service, is um, I had forgotten that when you're praying in a, an oppressed area or with an oppressed person, that worship is really hard. And sensing his direction in prayer is very challenging. It's like, it, it, it's like your prayers are muffled and they're not going anywhere. And that's kind of the way it has been until more recently. And we go out and we pray, and it's all of a sudden, oh my gosh, our prayers are going somewhere. Oh my heavens, I, I can hear or sense what it is that we're supposed to be praying specifically for. And we'll go down on Sandy, like Gloria and I did this week, and we prayed street by street by street. Father, we pray for your blessings up and down 114th. Father, come and bless every single home. Let them know your glory. Let them know your kindness. And it didn't feel like I couldn't believe it. It felt like, I believe this prayer. My will is engaged. I know that he's honoring what we're praying. And that's because we've been praying. That's a trust walk. I decided to engage with what the Lord showed me. How many of you have dreams that the Lord's given you, words that he's given you, and you just haven't had them come to pass? Yeah. So as you press in more and more to his presence, as you engage with him in fasting, as you read more of his word, take those things to him. Let him show you what's standing in the way in you, in lies that you may have believed that aren't really true about who he is, in areas where you haven't really trusted his character. Charlie? Charlie? Uh, I only shared this one time, and it was the week it happened, and that's been two or three years ago now, but I was standing, you know how I stand over at that corner? I, I love that place, and I just pray. And I turned around, and I looked out the door, and I just had this sense of the Lord coming from the east, just this wave of his presence, of his glory coming from the east, moving to the west, which then it dawned on me, that's what Lori was seeing too, so I prayed about it. I looked it up, and guess what? In Jerusalem, the east gate, ho, is the salvation gate. And God's glory, God's salvation is going to come, I believe, more and more through each of us and move toward the west, and people are going to get set free. Addictions are going to be broken. Oppression is going to be broken and silenced over people's minds. People are going to step into the field called liberty that Miko preached about. Their lives are not going to be constricted. They're going to be free again and able to be about what God's purposes are for them. <clears throat> That's exciting. And we've been walking in faith for a long time now. And so I know it can get discouraging, you know, but there's so few people here. But look who the people are who are here. You know, a, a, four of a kind beats a full house. 
And we have four of a kind, man, people that are serious about the kingdom. And so we need to continue to prepare our own hearts to be ready for a move of God. And so I mentioned at the beginning of the service, Lori and I both kind of had a sense for this this morning, and you've already been praying. If there's an area, I have mine, that you have felt like, man, I just don't seem to have the strength. I don't know what's going on. I feel stuck in this area. It has a power over me. It's not supposed to a prayer of agreement, you've probably already prayed by yourself. And sometimes when two agree together in prayer, there's just simply more power there. And I want all of us to walk in the freedom that God has for us, to see the breakthroughs that he died to win for us. So I want to give that opportunity, and I'm going to do it two ways. Um, Jeff and Marilyn, where's Marilyn? Did, oh, she disappeared. Well, Jeff and Marilyn, I want to have you guys available. Miko and Alyssa, if you can. Lori and I, you know, we'll be up front. And if for you, you just like acknowledging, Lord, I'm giving you this area. I want freedom for uh, being able to do what you want me to do over this area. You can mention it when you come forward if you want. Um, or you can just say, you know, pray what God puts on your heart. That's fine, too. But I want this to be an open house. And so if you know there's somebody here you would like to have agree with you in prayer for a breakthrough, then go to them and say, God, put it on my heart. Would you please agree with me that I'm going to get a breakthrough? And, and this one in particular, don't ask for a breakthrough for somebody else. That can be a bit of a cop-out. This is a breakthrough for you, you know. Um, it's a lot easier to share somebody else's business sometimes than your own, but this is a, this is a safe place. And... Uh, is that clear? So if there's somebody God puts on your heart, you can seek them out if you just want to come forward. I love coming forward because there's an attitude of acknowledgement. Like, Lord, I, I don't care what other people think. I'm serious about this. I'm moving now to a space where I can agree with somebody else. Amen? Yeah, and we want that river more and more, that river that flows from the throne, from God's kingdom. So, Father, we just thank you for Lori's message. Thank you for Jeff's word. But thank you for the people that you are calling up today, the people that you are making us to be able to pray in faith for people's healing, for people's salvation, for people's um, deliverance, for people's uh, provision. Lord, there are so many people who they need to learn to draw from even our living water, the relationship we have with you that they don't have yet you want us to be able to speak of your goodness and how you've worked in our lives in the way that can point out to them you can work in their lives as well. So we just ask for you to be present in this ministry time. I speak in Jesus' name. It's, this is not something we're just making up. We know it's for freedom, Jesus, that you died to set us free. And we want to be free from any area, any lie, any complacency, any doubt, any habit, that isn't bringing more of your kingdom and more of your presence into our life. We want to turn from it right now and not in our own willpower, but through the, the power of uh, the, the fruit of self-control that comes from your spirit. We're going to find new levels of freedom today for each person who responds in faith. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.